Hello, my name is Humberto Rodriguez and in the next 15 minutes I'm going to talk about our work on advanced joint patterns for the actor model based on complex event processing techniques. This work aims to provide a set of synchronization operators that can help developers of actor system to handle complex interaction patterns found on modern reactive applications. As you can see in this second slide, our work targets both distributed and embedded systems where every device or sensor is modeled as an actor and their reaction behavior or reaction rules are defined per device instead of a global centralized rule system who does all the coordination. Now maybe some of you are wondering, what is the problem in implementing this system using actors? What is missing? Well, the short answer is that actor languages offer developers limited synchronization patterns. As a matter of fact, the coordination of actors within a system relies only on the reaction to single messages. To illustrate this, consider a small actor system of four actors A, B, C, and D, where the actor D expects a message from the actors A, B, and C and expects them in that particular order. On the right side of this slide, you can see the implementation of the actor D in, in modern actor language, in this case Elixir. And the first thing that you have to do as developer is to define the actor in the interface. In this case, these actors will only understand three types of messages, message A, B, and C. Second, we have to keep track of previous relevant messages because we don't want to react to a single message, we want to react to a sequence of messages and we do it by saving their timestamps. Finally, we have to check whether or not the message were received in the expected order using the previously saved timestamp. Here, this example, it's quite simple. You are only comparing two uh, timestamps, but imagine that you want to correlate messages from five, 10, or even more actors that if condition will grow exponentially, making hard to read and to maintain for the developer. To sum up, this uh, example showcases that uh, we need some kind of synchronization operators that help us as developers to handle that state and to specify a particular message order instead of just do it in this hard code way. However, the big question here is what other synchronization patterns are needed? To help us to answer that question, we made a study of four smart home community forums and during that study we identified seven automation rules that we believe to be representative of the synchronization patterns that can be found in the real. This presentation will focus on one of them, particularly number five, that says uh, activate the occupied home scene when I arrive and activate the empty home scene when I leave. This example considers only two motion sensors and a door contact, so the occupied home scene will be activated if um, any movement is detected by the motion sensor on the front door and then the door was opened and finally the entrance hall motion detects any movement. Contrary, the empty home scene will be activated if the event occurs in the reverse order. However, once again the question here is how do we know these examples are good one. How do we know that they are representative uh, scenarios in this community? To validate that each automation scenario is a representative example of the different synchronization patterns found in the wheel, we published an online poll on four smart home community forums. Each respondent was required to reply with a yes or no answer whether or not they had to implement synchronization patterns similar to each of our seven automation scenarios. Notice that the questions of the, the poll uh, were about the scenarios, not a particular example. As you can see here, one of the questions that says, I have automation that required to detect a particular sequence of events. That's the scenario. And yeah, indeed we use uh, like a particular example to illustrate that, uh, that scenario that in this case is the same that we are using here in this presentation. As you can see, after 30 days, we collected votes from 714 voters. These results show uh, that our automation scenarios are a good example of concerns that represent themselves within that community. After we confirmed that our automation scenarios were representative in that community, what we did was to extract a set of operators that were required to express each of our uh, automation scenarios. We group them in five categories and as you can see here, each automation scenarios can require or use more than once. 
Based on our findings, we propose a domain-specific language that we call Sparrow to declaratively describe complex message combination to which an actor can respond. In other words, uh, Sparrow can be seen as an actor language whose actors have been enriched with complex event processing and joint patterns ideas. This slide gives you a taste of the Sparrow syntax and also showcases our, our solution to our automation scenario number five. After we import the language abstraction on, on line number two, we define the actor interface from line four to 13 using the pattern as primitive. Line four is the most basic pattern that is defined as a tuple of primitive value and logic variables, similar to how you would find them in a regular Elixir code. In this case, we use this definition to define a motion event that has an IDE uh, a status that can be on or off and a location, which in this example can be front door or entrance hall. On lines five and six, we specialize this motion event to disambiguate between front door and entrance hall motion. Sparrow allows us to specialize pattern by assigning a specific value to the logic variables of the base pattern. In this case, we do this for the location variable by assigning it the front door and the entrance hall symbols, respectively. On line seven, we have another basic pattern, but this time for the front door contact. This pattern also has an IDE a status, which in this case can be open or close and allocation. Sparrow has a number of built-in logical connectors that enable us a developer to combine patterns into a larger composite patterns. On lines nine to 13, we use this connector to construct the occupied home or the empty home patterns. For example, on line nine, we specify that for our home to be occupied, we need to receive a front door motion, a front door contact and an entrance hall motion event using the logical connector and. In order to infer that this event happened in that specific order and during a specific time period, we need to specify some additional constraints. On line 10, we specify that all three messages need to arrive in a time interval of 60 seconds, that they need to arrive in that specific order by putting the sequencing parameter to true, and we also specify that we are only interested in the last sequence of messages. On line 15 and 16, we define two reactions. This is what the body of a message would be in other actor languages. However, in this example, we have omitted their implementation as they are not relevant for this presentation. Now that we have defined both necessary uh, patterns and corresponding reactions, all that remains is to glue these together on lines 18 and 19 using the react to primitive. Sparrow supports a larger set of primitives than the ones shown in this example, so check out the paper if you are interested. We also want to mention that in a Sparrow, patterns can have multiple reactions and a reaction can be attached to multiple patterns. In this slide, we show the synchronization operators used in this implementation. Although this example only requires some of the identifier operators introduced on the slide number six, a Sparrow patterns support all of them. As we mentioned on slide number seven, Sparrow is a combination of joint patterns and complex event processing ideas. This slide shows the current support of the identified synchronization operators by state-of-the-art joint languages and Sparrow. As you can see, only a limited set of operators is supported and sometimes with limitation. Like for example, in JoCaml, only attribute equality tests are possible through pattern matching. Contrary to joint patterns, complex event processing languages have better support for the identified operators. However, unlike in Sparrow, not all of them are supported by a single language. Furthermore, they are not actor languages and therefore don't support a decentralized knowledge base. To evaluate the work, we implemented our scenarios in two smart home platform, an actor language, and using our DSL. Then we manually tag the code related with four concerns commonly found in our implementation. These concerns do not consider uh, code not related to the coordination process, like for example, import, reaction logic of the automation, etc. Finally, using these tags, we compare the expressiveness of each solution. To obtain a fair comparison between our actor-based solutions and the one from the smartphone platform, we publish our solution on both community forums, 
open hub and open hub system this allowed us to uh, get feedback and incrementally arrive at a solution that could be implemented by experts in these communities in our comparison this slide shows a solution to our automation scenario number five in open hub elixir and sparrow as you can observe well, Sparrow offers the most compact solution where developers focus mainly on the specification of the correlation logic of the problem. One of the main things that you can notice is that in a Sparrow you don't have to manage a state, so keeping track of previous messages is all handled by the, by the runtime, and also it supports more uh, high-level abstraction for uh, specifying uh, sequencing and timing constraints. Here you can see the result of our evaluation. The table shows a breakdown per platform of the total line of code written in our solution for each concern and their respective uh, relative percentage. Using this comparison, we show that uh, Sparrow seems to succeed at reducing the effect of non-functional concerns that arise during the synchronization of messages in a complex actor system. To sum up, our work targets the development of reactive systems where the coordination of multiple actors is required. We demonstrate that current synchronization patterns supported by modern actor languages are limited. Later, we introduce a non-exhaustive set of synchronization operators using a smart home scenario. After that, we introduce a Sparrow, a domain-specific language to describe complex message combination to which an actor can respond. Then we evaluate Sparrow by comparing the expressiveness of its solution to our seven automation scenarios against the solution of three other platforms. Finally, uh, we want to say that although we use a smart home scenario as an application domain to help steer our research, we conjecture Sparrow as a general purpose actor coordination framework that can be used to express synchronization uh, pattern for other event-driven domains. Thanks for your attention.